The passage we're looking at today may feel a bit like a non-event between the horrors of the crucifixion and the glory of the resurrection. But actually, this passage plays a really important part in the way that Mark wants to tell us the story of Jesus. You see, very soon after all of these events took place, rumours began to circulate that Jesus didn't actually die. Uh, people were saying that he just became unconscious and then he was revived later in the tomb. And so Mark shares these important facts with us to prove that Jesus really did die. If you look with me at the book of Mark, verse, uh, chapter 15, verse 42, we read this. It was the preparation day, that is the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph brought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in the linen, and placed it in a tomb out, cut out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. So as these rumors were swirling around, Mark reassures us that Jesus really did die. Each of these characters bears witness to the fact the centurion, Joseph, the women, and even Pilate in his way recognized that Jesus really did die or as Mark tells us, he died as a ransom for many. But this passage is more than just an apologetic necessity. It also paints a picture for us of what faltering devotion to Jesus can look like. Joseph of Arimathea isn't the Joseph that we think of at the beginning of the Gospel stories, the man married to Mary, the one who helped to bring Jesus up. This Joseph, it must be a popular name, this Joseph is a member of the ruling council, the Sanhedrin, the most powerful political movers in the Jewish world at the time of Jesus. And so, although Luke tells us this Joseph didn't consent with the decision, he was a part of the group that sentenced Jesus to death. Now, as a man who was waiting for the kingdom of God, a man who'd come to believe that Jesus was God's King, God's Messiah, imagine how conflicted he must have felt. It would have been dangerous for him to think and believe what he thought. He would have felt outnumbered, frightened. But in the wake of everything that had happened, Joseph decided that he needed to honour Jesus. And so going to Pilate, he asks for the body. He prepares it. He rests Jesus in the tomb. And all of this seems to represent his faltering devotion to Jesus, whatever the personal cost might be. And perhaps that's a good thing for us to pray for ourselves as individuals and for our church today, that we, a little bit like Joseph, would take faltering steps in following Jesus and showing our devotion to him, whatever the cost might be to us.